situation and praying your way out of stuff. But the second patch, as I read, is about how God can use people who come out of these types of situations. So let's turn back to the book of Judges. Judges, Judges chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Now in verse 1, again, it talks about Jephthah was a mighty warrior and the son of a harlot. No, mighty warrior was mentioned first. That's what God called and ordained him to be. He just so happened to be born into this negative situation, but that negative situation didn't define who he was or how God saw him. It was just a circumstance. That harlot was just a vessel. And for those of y'all who don't know what harlot means, it's a biblical word for prostitute or a lady of the night or whatnot, and some of those other not-so-nice words that we use. So Gilead was his dad, and he may have denied him. He may have suspected he was the son of one of the harlot's customers. We don't know. Again, the Bible is silent on that, so I can't say. Just throwing out some possibilities. But as I mentioned before, they didn't have DNA tests back then, so he couldn't tell if it was his child or one of the customers. You know, they weren't even really good at looking at the calendar and, you know, what other little things people can look at sometimes and try to figure things out. You know, back then, it was a big guessing game oftentimes. And the mother's name is not mentioned in the story. Now, Jephthah's siblings rejected him. Sometimes siblings will pick up on the opinion and behaviors of the adults in the family, and they refuse to claim half-siblings or step-siblings. God sees it differently. Now, I'm going to share a brief story from one of my all-time favorite television shows, The Brady Bunch. Now, for those of you that don't know the show, it was about a blended family. There was a man with three boys that was a widower, and a woman with three girls that was a widower, a widow. And they had to blend the family together. And in the beginning, they had to work out a whole lot of issues to get to the point where they all bonded as one unit. And that was often the plot of some of the funny episodes. Well, there was one particular episode where at one point, the youngest son, Bobby, considered running away because he wasn't sure if he could be loved by a stepmother or if this particular new stepmother would love him. Well, as in most sitcoms, it took about 30 minutes to work through all the issues. But I'll never forget this one line that applies to the point that I was making. Carol Brady, the mother in the house, pointed to the staircase in the house, and she told Bobby, the only steps in this house are those. Well, actually, she pointed behind her because she was pointing to the steps in that particular house. But I'm just making a point because these are the steps here. So he was saying, well, you know, are you really going to love me because I'm a step? And she said, the only steps in this house are those, and she pointed to the steps. So those are the only steps that God sees in houses as well. So don't feel bad about yourself because you're a stepchild or a step-sibling or a half-sibling. God sent you to that family. He created you for it. And the Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're a blessing Amen. to whatever family God sent you to. I don't care how God sent you to that family. Amen. And even in the Bible, God blessed stepchildren and half-siblings. There was a man named Ishmael. And this was back in Genesis. I don't have time to get into that whole story. You could be here until dinner time. But this particular man was still and kept by God, even though his father had him with a handmaiden and not his wife. This is the Abraham and Sarah story, just to give you a little point of reference to go back and read it over yourself. So he wasn't the promised son for certain things that were only for his brother Isaac, but God did not love Ishmael any less. Now looking at verse 3 of this chapter, apparently Jephthah was considered worthless, but he wasn't the only one. Other worthless people went on the raid with him. So stop feeling like you're the only one in your situation. I know I sometimes get like that, and I feel like nobody understands what I'm going through. Nobody else has it this bad. Nobody else is going through it to this extreme, and I'm guilty of that, and I'm sure some of y'all are too. But you know what? I know it hurts to be rejected and unwanted and labeled based on someone else's situation and issues, but believe me, God will get you through it. You know, I'm up here in the pulpit preaching, but I've been through my share of pain too. I couldn't get up here and preach and prophesy and pour into you if I something. You know, I can't just read this Bible. I gotta live it. I gotta experience it. Because I can get up here and tell you all this stuff, but y'all will be like, oh, well, you don't know. You know, you're just reading something or something somebody told you. But I'm going through stuff too, so I'm a living witness and a living testimony that God can bless you in spite of what you're going through. Preach it, Jamil. Preach it. So anyway, a lot of people go through these types of things that I'm preaching about. And God can and will use those people that are called workers to be soldiers for him. So this talk kind of about like an army where they're fighting physical battles and soldiers fighting a war. But we're soldiers for Christ. And we're fighting spiritual warfare every day. So kind of see yourself as being able to be a soldier for Christ and able to fight the spiritual warfare and hold up the bloodstained banner. You can do that even if people think you're worthless. Amen. Now, in verse 6, the people who rejected this man eventually made him a leader. They came to him when they were in trouble. You know, sometimes people get rejected and ostracized on 
also the um, people that they lean on sometimes is a spiritual rock or the one that they rejected. Remember what I said about the stone that the builders rejected? The chief cornerstone is Christ, and that also applies to us. That the very one that's rejected can be the foundation of something, the foundation of a ministry, the foundation in the family, the foundation on the job, the spiritual you know, leader in the family, a pillar in their community. You know, God can use us in many places and things, even things that we never even imagined or saw ourselves capable of. And stuff like this rejection also happens when people get jealous of someone's degree or position at a job or material things that they possess. But then that's when they go to when they help solving a problem. So they might get jealous, well, Mrs. So-and-so has a higher position or she's getting more pay or she's got all these degrees so they're paying her more. But then when they get confused, then that's when they go to. You know, maybe they're confused about the crash and they're ready to throw it out the window, but then they go to the smart computer science person and they hate it on, you know, yesterday because they had all this education. So you see, it's not only about people with bad situations or from bad situations that get rejected and mistreated. It happens for other reasons as well. And I'm sure everybody in here has been rejected at some point in life for one reason or another. But it's what God says that matters. God calls you and God needs you. Each and every one of you in here, God needs you for something. Now sometimes when the folk that mistreat and reject us come to us for something, the flesh wants to rise up and respond in a carnal manner. So now I'm sure Jephthah may have had the same issue. You know, these people that rejected him were now coming to him and asking him to lead him, asking him to lead them and asking, you know, him to help them out with this war or whatnot. And I'm sure that the flesh was about to rise up in him. And he may have had that issue. But the Holy Spirit can empower us to show the love of Christ and to move on and work together with folk for the good of the body of Christ, our churches, our families, our jobs, and our communities. Minister Offer was talking about moving forward and not going back. So now we got to put all that junk behind us and move forward. Even if they did reject us, if they're coming to us and they need us, let God, you know, move in the situation and work everything out and we can work together. I've seen it work. And I'm going to give you a quick example. Now, I'm a diehard football fan, as many of you know. And for some reason, God often uses football analogies to help me understand spiritual things. And he gives me football examples when I'm preaching. Well, there was a particular team that I followed that had a player that did some things and said some things off the field that embarrassed the team, and it caused some division, hurt feelings, and whatnot. Some people probably felt hurt, rejected, or part of a persecuted group due to what went down. But I saw God move. The two main quarterbacks used during that preseason were throwing passes to the guy week after week. They didn't like what he said, they didn't like what he did, and it hurt them personally in some way. People felt those guys would never be able to be united. There was all this stuff on the local news about what was going on in the locker room and are we going to get a Super Bowl ring this year with all this stuff going on. But they were working together with someone they were hurt by and thought they couldn't trust. You know, I heard a guy on the news saying, I can't trust that man. And then they were giving him, you know, giving him the ball after they said they couldn't trust him. And it kind of helped because the quarterback is a leadership position. And the two quarterbacks that were the two main quarterbacks that preseason both happened to be saved. So Christians and leaders have to set the example. In that team, they won a lot of games by working together in spite of the hurt. That main guy that kind of disgraced the team and said things that hurt some of his teammates, he was one of the main ones catching a lot of the passes. They even celebrated together. They got a playoff berth because of it. Went pretty far, you know, in the season. Went to the, went to the playoffs, something that was not expected. And I saw people hugging people on the field that they just said days ago they felt they couldn't trust after being hurt. So again, you know, God used this whole football story to illustrate how you, with the power of God, all things are possible and you can work together. Now there's a lot more to that story, but the bulk of it would be another whole sermon. But I just wanted you to see how, just like